today I'm going to be giving a brief video tutorial on indices or powers as they're sometimes called. And that's basically when we have something in the form a to the power of n, where this number is what we call our power, and then this number on the bottom is what we call our base. So a power is anything written in this form, basically. So if we first take the case where our power is a positive number, so it's greater than or equal to 1. So we could have something like a to the power of 5. Or if we want to put in a number as our base, we could have something like 2 to the power of 3. What it basically means when we have something in this form is that you're taking n lots of your base and multiplying them together. So a to the power of 5 is just 5 lots of a multiplied together. So this would just be a times a times a times a times a. And similarly, in this example, we're just taking 3 lots of 2 and multiplying them together. So this is just equal to 2 times 2 times 2, which you can work out. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is just equal to 8. So 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed, is just equal to 8. So our general rule when our power is a positive number is that a to the power of n is just equal to n lots of a multiplied together. Things are a little bit different when we have a negative number as our power. So if our power is now less than 0, what something like this is basically equal to is 1 over the equivalent positive power. So if we had a to the minus 5, this is just equal to 1 over a to the positive 5. And in this example, 2 to the minus 3 is just equal to 1 over 2 to the positive 3. I worked this part out in the last example, so 2 to the minus 3 is equal to 1 over so our general rule when we have a negative number as our power is that a to the minus n is just equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So there are the rules for positive and negative powers. There's just one case I haven't covered yet. And that's when we have something to the power of 0. And what we define this to be equal to is just 1. So no matter what you have as your base, it will, if you put it to the power of 0, it will always equal 1. So we could have 2 to the power of 0, or 1,000 to the power of 0, or we could even put in unknowns. So we could even have something like 500x to the power of 0. And this is still all equal to 1. So our general rule, when we have something to the power of 0, is that a to the power of 0 there's only one instance where this isn't true, and that's when your base is equal to zero. So if we have zero to the power of zero, then this isn't necessarily equal to one. Zero is a bit of a special case. Uh, I won't be going into what zero to the power of zero is in this video, but I'm going to post a link on alongside this video on the blog that explains a bit about it if you wanted to have a look. So that's brief introduction to positive and negative indices. In the next video, I'll be explaining how we multiply and divide indices together.